Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Trials of Fire. I just wanted to make a quick comment um, about a couple things. I, I realized that the, the sound was a bit off last time, so I'm, I'm hoping this time that uh, I adjusted it correctly. Um, uh, second, this, this isn't necessarily a uh, long campaign game like Gloomhaven or Battle Brothers, uh, the other two games that I generally play. So this is going to be more or less like a, a filler from time to time when I when I have some some time to put together a, a mini series. Then Trials of Fire is, is going to be one of those. Um, let's adjust this a little bit more. Uh, I feel like Trials of Fire is going to be a great game to, you know, if I if I have a weekend or a day that I can sit down and play for a couple hours, then then this is going to be one of those games that that I can create some more extra content for you guys and um, uh, put these out. It, they generally won't go out all in the same day, but sometimes I might make them all in the same day. So just keep that in mind if you say, oh, you. Like you made a mistake or um, try this out, then don't be, don't think that I'm not taking that in consideration. It's just that, uh, for instance, today I'm just making two of these videos immediately. Um, the first tor tutorial and now this one, and maybe I'll continue after another 45 minutes. But all right, so enough talk. Let's just uh, continue. So we left off last time we're on day two and we want to just kind of continue along um, something that I do notice is I mean we're, we're we don't see any uh, any events any locations with events uh, we don't see anything up here as well so I'm I'm wondering if something does show up there eventually Okay, so it's not showing up. I, I I was just wondering. I've, as I said, I I never noticed that in the uh, the first time I started playing it. So let's jump down to the south here. Ahead, the skeletal remains of a human shackled around a char charred tree stump. There's a wooden board with peril written in what looks like blood. The right arm is pointing directly left. Hmm. Do we go left or right? Um, well, if Peril is going to the left, I'm wondering if Peril is to the left or if it says Peril go to the left, right? <laughs> but it says here, ignoring the obvious decision or uh, warning, and then we come to a decision. Let's just go to the right and there's a chance to find something. No. Okay. So we're tired. Um, all right, these guys down here, uh, these are enemies that are just wandering the map. I mean, they, they've kind of added quite a bit of uh, interesting things within this game, the developers. And um, not only, I mean, you just walk around a map and find some things, but um, there's there's also these enemies just walking around wandering, and they when they see you, I believe they just chase you down. I don't know if it's always like that or if uh, sometimes they will uh, run away. I'm not entirely sure. But I've seen this before, so we want to get down there. Um, let's head in that direction. I'm not sure if they even see us. We are moving slower, uh, which is kind of which is kind of bad. Let's take Let's take a rest. Gain back some of our stamina here. We're just going to rest. So now we're at fresh. Break some break camp. And let's wander into what this is. You believe this area to have once been known simply as the Northern Forest, a once mighty woodland area, vital to human for industry. A band of rattling seems to have set up camp amongst the shade of the desiccated branches. So here's Northern Forest. 
I haven't seen this one actually. I'll read this later though. And Ratlings. This is a bit of lore on the um, the race of Ratlings within the within the uh, world. Let's continue. The Ratlings bar you from entry to the camp proper, but offer to trade if you have the coin. So we could just barge our way in or see what they have. Um, hard battle, epic reward, and food. So Ratlings are... Um, they're kind of... I mean, their own little race. I would say that they're probably more traders. I, I don't know everything, and I've kind of forgot some of the things... Um, I'd like to dive a little deeper into the lore. I think it's pretty interesting. But um, I say let's go for it. Try to force your way into the settlement. I know this is probably a bad thing, uh, but a hard battle with an epic reward and some food. Uh, we could just shop and maybe purchase some things, but let's go. Can't be that hard, right? Nah. So there's three rattling bowmans. And um, they each have six health. We'd like to get up to them as quick as possible, and uh, and they're pretty squishy, so we can we can take them out pretty quickly too. So, um, yeah, let's let's get Will uh, prepare out, and let's get into an interesting position here. I think I'm going to use Biding Time. You may hold on to an additional card this turn. At the end of your turn, reduce the cost of all cards in hand by two. Let's use that so that next round, uh, next turn, if we get some interesting cards, we could possibly use some free cards. And unfortunately, what it looks like I'm going to have to do is just use some cards to get into a position we're just gonna kind of get her hmm I guess we could move here they need they need sight on us in order to hit um, We need to get a bit closer in order to do in order to do a bit more um, uh, damage. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Um, really. Let's use this to move. They still can't see me, so that's good. And we'll wait here. We'll get a couple uh, shield because I didn't use that for movement. Let's see what they're doing. They're moving up slowly, trying to get some sight on us. Okay. All right. Not bad. Not bad at all. So. Definitely want to use charge. Because that will we'll move three and then increase. So we could go one, two, three to here and then hit that one and probably just kill it outright. It would be melee attack two for each one. So then one, two, three. Uh, so two four six is actually what I mean to say. So we want that. And we could even move here to get there, and then we can start doing some attacks there. So hmm, maybe I read that wrong. So it it's showing that they all cost two. Maybe because I took a hit, it went away. I don't I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Let's use this to get this. 
um, charge. So you can see we can kind of choose. That's that's pretty cool. And it's going to do five damage if I go there. I wonder. I thought it would be two plus one. Oh, two plus one for each space. So that's five. Okay. Bam. Not bad. We've removed its power. That's good. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to use this to just move up. And then let's start just... I think if I get into... Yeah, let's move here. And then let's make this attack here. So that attack, uh, maybe I should have shown that um, maybe it goes back? No. Um, well, we can use prepare, actually. That's a good one to use. So, basically what that was, was it was two damage, and then at a random target, I think within range two or three or something like that, it would do another two damage. Sorry about that. Plane, plane was flying over. Alright, so... Yeah, two damage here and then two damage to a random target within some range here. Um, I'll read it the next time. Um, but we'll be able to take care of this one pretty quickly. Let's let's just drop one of these and then get here. I'm not too worried about it attacking us. We'll just we'll just let it do that. Um, and I'm gonna drop this one. Move here so that we can use power shot next round against against this one so here's that card it says magic attack two to a target within three spaces and to one random enemy within two spaces of the target much more clear when I, uh, more clear than what I said. So we'll just use this to get rid of that one. That was a nice blast there. Drop that swipe to take a power shot here. Ooh, but he had plenty of, didn't realize that. We have another. Hmm. But we can start moving in, so we'll do that. We'll use this to move in again. Drop this card and, and hit it. And I guess I can just kind of get rid of some of these. Um, I think the, the cool thing about hers, uh, about the Enchantress or uh, Elementalist, is she doesn't need line of sight to use the magic do it wherever she's standing get into this, this rattling's face um we'll keep this maybe we can use it the next round ah we'll get it. it's going to have a turn it's going to looks like it's going to move away yeah take a shot that was it Heroic cards. Powerful one-shot actions that you can use to swing the tide of battle. But you can only use them once. They can't be du duplicated in any way. Um, heroic. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Critical strike. Melee attack three. So, oh, we have to get up to it. So all damage bonuses count is quadruple we don't have any damage bonus yet um, but we will eventually and that's it it says hard battle I, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure if it's actually a hard battle or because it's a beginner quest that this is typically a harder battle than the other kinds of battles I'm not entirely sure um, anyway I, I do have Uh, I do have a like a, a couple scenarios under my belt, so I've I've played it a little bit. I know this is the starter 
quest um, or scenario, but um, yeah, I, I think it, it is a good place to start even if you have some experience. It's still a, a very fun um, quest. So uh, we've picked up treated leather and mithril dust that we can use for crafting. Um, the cool thing is, is it shows what you can craft with it. Um, but I'm not sure. It doesn't show that you can't, or you don't have enough. That might be an interesting thing to put in there. Uh, but we did bring in darkened wraps and serrated bone. Full target enemy within two spaces, then melee attack five and inflict defenseless. Defenseless is may not gain defense. That looks like a very good one. Uh, we're going to go with the elementalist this time. Because I, I, I really like, uh, out of the three, I like the Elementalist. I think she has some pretty strong power. She can be a very powerful um, character within these three. Um, I don't know any of the other characters that you can unlock. Uh, well, I know a couple of them, but um, this one is, of the starting three, this one's pretty great. Um, I don't like her unstable blast all too much because it, it meets... It means she needs to be in in close to the enemies and um, I haven't tried it but I assume, I assume it says all targets in the indicated area so it, if there are allies within those uh, three spots um, as you can see uh, I, can't, I can't really show it but underneath the text of the card it shows that uh, darker spot and then the red or orange spots um, meaning that that darker spot, that's where she's standing, and then those other ones are hexes in a line like that. And if whoever's there is going to take that damage. Um, I typically don't like that. I haven't used it very much uh, unless they are up close. But um, obviously we want to get rid of swipe pretty early. I like stone barrier though. Static Discharge, deal 2 magic damage and inflict Shocked. Shocked is whenever hit by melee or ranged attack, deal 1 status damage to all friendlies within 2 spaces. That one's a really fun one. Um, on an enemy within 2 spaces and then jump to a different enemy within 2 spaces and repeat. So this is a really cool one if you have a bunch. This one they have to be in a line, whereas this one uh, they don't have to be in melee dam uh, melee range, but um, it still hits a bunch of enemies uh, in a line base. So that one's a really cool. One. And this one's pretty cool, Storm Conduit. I haven't played this one before. After playing a card that deals damage, deal two magic damage and inflict shock to a random enemy within four spaces. That one's pretty cool. Uh, draw power is a really cool one as well. I know I've said all of them, are, but uh, um, look at the top two cards of your deck. Draw one and reduce its willpower to zero. This one's fantastic, and I think I'll go for this one first. Um, it's a great card for her to play first because her first one is going to be minus one. So this one's going to be free. And let's replace a swipe. Um, right clicking it, we can see that it's the top four cards. And um, so it, it just gets better. It's, it's, a, it's a great card for her. So it says shelter there, resting. If we have shelter, then it's going to increase our stamina faster. Um, we might as well rest here. There's a couple other places around. It says that we have shelter, so let's just take the shelter. Um, we're just going to rest again. I'd like to be getting some of these, but let's not get lucky. Um, let's rest. So as you can see, that uh, our stamina increased quite a bit, 30%. We'll be able to uh, walk around enough now so um, I'm thinking I was thinking of going this way I mean it's really it's really close right but we only have two so it's probably for the better that we 
the food. Uh, let's go. It's it's pretty close. Raston spots a strange elven looking container suspended from a tree hanging over a deep fissure. After a short discussion, Malkin decides to climb up and try to reach the satchel. However, the bow that she is on gives way. Catch the satchel <laughs> before it falls into the fissure. Um, health damage, epic reward, food. 66% weakness or catch Malkin. Oh man. Well, the risk takers gain the reward, right? Let's go for it. <laughs> Jar instinct instinctively reaches out and catches the elven satchel before it falls out of reach. Malkin, however, continues to fall without catching a root protruding from the side of the fissure and painfully wrenching her shoulder. Oh, so she catches herself. Yeah, she's fine. Alright, well, we picked up mystic herbs. That's nice. More mithril dust, and we picked up a leather helm. That's great. Some mystic herbs. As the party moves away, Malkin hangs back a bit. Eyeing the rest of the group with suspicion. Is her life worth so little? Uh oh. Okay. So Malkin has gained a trait paranoid. Yeah, so this is uh this is an interesting card. It says weakness. Um there's other injuries and things like that. I haven't seen one of these weaknesses before. Uh I don't think anyway. But this this one's paranoid. When she draws this card. Melee attack 2 on all adjacent characters, including friendlies, and gain 2 defense for each attack. So this might be interesting for her to draw in certain situations. We can't be standing next to her. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if this is something we can remove later. We'll have to see. But... Alright. Well, well, let's continue to move. We did pick up some food. That was, nice. that was kind of what I did that for. You come across a deep hollow in the middle of an elven settlement. The sides are sheer, but you can see some sort of luminous plant life at the bottom of the pit. Yeah, it should be the same. Element. So let's just, uh, after that last one, let's, let's stay away from that. We'll, we'll pick up it's the food. Ooh, a minor power potion. Create a card that deals magic damage from a choice of three. That's pretty interesting. So we have a bunch of these items. I should be putting them on my uh, characters immediately. Singed manual. Double effort. Collect a card in hand and shuffle a temporary copy into your deck. Oh, cool. Okay. Double down, target a character with named effect, create one card in hand that inflicts the same effect for one of its effects. Okay. And second, wind, remove all negative named effects, all weakness cards from your hand and your discard pile. Draw two cards. Ooh, okay, so this is definitely going on uh, Malkin here. Let's take a look at those new items. Uh, Double Strike, this was one that we took off of uh, Jara at the beginning. I'm not too interested in that, keeping it. I'm gonna, I'll gonna i put Seld items, or items I don't care too much about down here. Um, so that when I pick up new items, I know But Skulk, move three and gain one willpower. Can, pass move, can move past enemies. This one's nice for and the sneaking around, we don't have to necessarily, uh, we don't care about uh, zone of control. Running offense. All of your attacks ignore defense. After every attack, this power loses one resilience. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's put that on somebody like uh, Jara. 
that slot right there. I think that's going to be pretty great. We've taken quite a bit of cards for her now. Um, don't know if there's a way to see how many cards... Oh, well, this is cool. I haven't spent too much time looking at this. Boons. Cards in your deck that increase your willpower when played. Cards in your deck that allow you to draw additional cards. I'm just wondering how many... I guess that's what this number is, 17. The number of cards in our deck. So, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, okay, that's what that is. All right. Well, that's cool. Uh, I definitely want to use grapple. I like grapple, but this charge is very important to do. Hmm. He's the only one that can use it. I think I'd rather the charge. Oh, they're both pretty good, right? Um, rage. Draw two cards. Draw one fewer card at the end of your turn. Gives an extra armor. We'll take that. Minor power potion. Create a card that deals magic damage from a choice of three. Well, we'll put this with her. Um, Balkan here. I don't know if I want to use this. There's only that one slot on uh, Jara. And the only person that can use this one is Malkin. So we'll we'll definitely use it. I think it's going to come in handy. Um, that increases her, her deck up to 16. But there is something else to keep in mind. The, the thinner your deck, like when you reshuffle your deck, when you go through the whole deck... Uh, through turns, through a combat. Um, every time you reshuffle the deck, you're including this exhausted card that can't be used for anything, except you can still use it to create willpower. So you can discard it to create willpower, but there's no um, effects on it other than that. Other than it glues, like, a, kind of gums up your hands, you have less options to play with, so... I think we're pretty good though. 12 cards here, 18 and 16. I think we're a pretty decent card amounts. Um, let's just continue Elven Ruins here. A group of charred hunters are laying in wait for anyone foolish enough to enter the room. So charred are these really cool, uh, really interesting um, humanoid kind of, yeah, the they're humanoid survivors of the cataclysm, and they're basically burned. Uh, we'll take a look here. This is a charred warrior. There's other types of charred uh, enemies, but um, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll bring in prepare. I'd like to kind of use this as a barricade for her. She can kind of fight over that without too much trouble. Uh, we'll keep this one. I think I'm just going to get rid of that. She can stand here. Uh, we might just stand here, honestly. I, I think this is kind of a good place for us to be. Um, defend two after playing, performing a melee attack. That's going for her. Um, let's keep let's keep swipe and we'll just drop that. We're, I don't think we're gonna move. They they can come to us. We can attack. So when you choose a card, whoops. When you choose a card or put the cursor over a card, it shows who you can attack. So we could attack down here. Ah, uh, okay, so at the end of your turn, reduce the cost of all cards in hand by two. That makes more sense. So if I'm holding this one, so I, I think what I'll do is is use this and then just hold on to these two. Um, well, I might as well just do this. It's going to help me. So we'll keep these cards and we get the plus two there. That's good. 
So they're going to charge forward and two. Advance. Sneaky, sneaky. They are trying to pin down my hunter um, up here. I didn't really think about them going in that direction, but good work. So this is now a, a zero card. We, we want to use that, but we might want to walk up first. I think I'm going to do it that way, unless we could use this. Because if we can if we can get two into melee range, then we'll be able to, uh, to kill it off pretty quickly. Um, this is in three spaces here, so let's go with that. Let's go here first, so I can show you. So now, yeah, we can we can use magic attacks over barricades or over obstacles like this. Uh, but I'm gonna use this, and then it'll attack the other one there. Target a character with a named effect. Uh, no named effects. Oh, it could be any character, couldn't it? Let's target. Oh no, okay. Named effect would be the thing on the top right. Um, not corner, because the circles. Double down. Let's use that. I don't think I'll be using this. Uh, let's. We'll drop that just to move up. We'll go there. That looks good. And I think I want to bring him in. Um, although this one looks like a good one to uh, to attack with, let's use it to move. And then we'll start attacking here. Swipe. That's one down. Then... It's rage. No. Let's keep faint. I'd like to use that. I think that's going to be worthwhile. Then. Yeah, it's not really worth attacking here. I'll use this just to, to gain some more uh, shield for everyone. As you can see, we're, we now have quite a bit of shield on everyone. We don't have to necessarily spend all the cards to move and... and or use them use them for the willpower we can instead use them just to gain some shield so that's what we did that's not bad drop that that's for sure yeah as you can see it's it's lining up here and here so this is a very tricky um, we kind of have to be in the perfect situation to use it let's use this that looks like a fun Um, buying insects. Magic area 3 on enemies and target area. So just enemies, not characters. If this attack deals damage, the next time you exert this power, do not discard a power. Hmm. Magic attack 3, then attack again for each power active on the target. Um, hide. We don't see any powers on either of them. So let's use, let's grab static charge. There we go. So shocked, whenever hit by melee, deal one status damage to all friendly uh, targets within two spaces. So that's not necessarily going to be the, what we're going to see here, but let's kind of move up here. This looks fun. Uh, we'll do this. we draw hard um, 
Well, let's let's start attacking here. If we can kill this one before we um, get away, then yeah. Let's go this way. I I want to get into a uh, position. I'm just kind of spending those to move into a position so I can do this. Bam. And I'm gonna move up and then there. Not so bad at all. And we have one more level up. Um I was Couple I've never seen. Deadeye. All range attacks deal plus two damage. That's a good one right there. Signal shot. Range attack three. Then active. Activate all other friendly characters. That's nice, but I'm already seeing lineup. Move to gain one willpower, and your next attack this turn deals damage. Um, I think I want to. I was thinking of replacing an advance, but let's uh, uh, let's let's do a swipe. I want to be more mobile with him and take more of these shots instead of the melee shots. I want I want to be focusing more on on range. So let's do that. Uh, wood, healthy wood is another one of these and hand wraps. Your attacks deal bonus damage equal to the cost of the previous non-move card played. Okay, uh, we're getting to, well, let's take a quick nap here. Okay, now there's a number here. You can see, and this isn't grayed out anymore. So we can only choose one. That's the thing. We can click on it and go back and forth. You know? But here... But... Here, we can... Remove a card or just straight up... Yeah, we put it into upgrade or forget. And I'm, I kind of want to use that new card here. Um, because it's going to increase the damage by three instead of two, or we could use draw power for that four. What did we do for her? Resilience. Resilience is defend four at the beginning of your turn. That's pretty huge instead of three. But that's that's not so bad. And it has high resilience too, eight or ten if it's rated. But let's go with this. I, I like this card. Let's upgrade it. We can um, forget as well. We can only do one. Or the, I like I like lineup. We'll, let's let's go for that. Um, so as you can see, we rested. We used the mystic herb, meditate. Um, we did lose a food, and we are back up to fresh. We can also do this. You can see here that there's a check mark now, so we can. Uh, if we want to rest further, we'd still have to eat more food. We would gain some more health and um, stamina, but we're pretty high up there. Fine. Um, but now we can start uh, upgrading some of these. There's also another one that will pop up here. Um, don't know when or why, but we'll see. There's an event that makes it pop up. I'm not, um, let's just, I mean, I typically just kind of go to everything <laughs> along the way. If it's just slightly out of the way, I'll go there. Uh, you hear the clanking noise of a hammer striking stone and the sound of sawing wood. It becomes clear that a family of human men and women are reconstructing a house destroyed in an aurora storm. I'm gonna learn what that is. Um, we've got the food. Let's let's go for it. We could lose obsidian food or reward. Oh, sorry. We could lose obsidian, gain food or a reward. 
but we are going to lose one food. Let's help them. After construction, the family offer you a celebratory drink and toast your health, but something feels horribly wrong as the liquid touches your throat. The next thing you do... Okay, I'm only going to take a picture of that and bring it to them. Uh, on the Discord channel, they have... Um, they love feedback. Uh, they talk to you quite a bit, the developers. And when you find something like this, the next thing you think you know, um, uh, they, they like to hear these, uh, find these. So You wake up on a cart in the middle of nowhere under the midday sun. Oh, that wasn't very nice of them. We didn't gain anything out of that. Do we lose money? Less money. Oh, I think those are harpies. Uh, so this is our objective here. Pull up here. Find the remains of an elven palace that is still partly suspended in the treetops. From the markings, you are sure that this is the place you are looking for. The water stone must be near. It soon becomes clear that the palace is not deserted. Dara hears a voice from inside, and there are rattling shadows in the elemental heights. Okay. We'll fight them. Elite enemies. They have their own little powers. Um, we'll take a look at that. Yep. So, Swarm Leader. All other units gain plus two defense at the start of their turn. Ooh. Um, they have two Rattling Guards. So if we can take out the Rattling Sorcerer quickly, that would be nice. And two after performing a melee attack. That sounds like a good idea. Let's start moving in that direction. Um, I think it'd be better to kind of stay in this direction just in case they swarm uh, up here. Second wind. Remove all negative named effects, all weakness cards from your hand in your discard pile. Well, we don't have any of those yet, so let's, let's not use that one. That's not necessary at the moment, and I just want to hide her a little bit. Um, the sorcerer can use magic against her, so we won't. Hard magic damage, gain one full power. Yeah, let's use that. Okay. Uh, let's keep swipe, I think. And we definitely want to use one of these. This is what I'm going to do. Use that, and we're just going to use, keep both of these cards, and this one will be one, and this one will be Oh, they're actually both free. Sorry, I forgot that. They're both minus two. Okay. So they are moving up in that northern direction. Completely fine. Oh, well, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Now I don't have to move up to them. Then two after performing a melee attack. Okay, so... What we want to do here is... I'm wondering if this is... This should be attacking both of them. It says... Uh, let's take a look at it. Melee attack 5 or range attack 4. Also hits anyone directly behind the target. As you can see, when you when I uh, bring this out, it shows which one it's going to be hitting. This one is right there. This one is not showing it, and that's what's uh, thinking it should. So let's do it anyway. Okay, so it was 3-3. Three, three. And now let's use this start uh, removing all of that. Oh, I could have used that too. 
So we can bring this back. Um, and I'm going to use it because I think it's pretty important. Let's step up to here. He could move here, but um, I'm not too worried about that. I guess I could take this first. This is the part that... Uh, this is the part that I love. Like, it's the puzzle trying to figure out... Okay, so we can get rid of that. We want to move into a better position here. Let's use Force Missile, definitely. We can remove that one and then that one. That's good. Now let's use Power Shot here. Bam. Um, to swipe, we'll gain two because of that. Let's drop, let's drop this. Swipe again. I'd like to be killing that. Um, put the power on her and. Let's actually just get rid of this because I want to put resilience on. I think that's going to be pretty important for our tank at this point. It's going to be a lot of melee attacks again. So. It's not very smart for them to just be standing right there. If this one moved up first, then they could be uh, doing some combo attacks. Yeah, see, just like that. <laughs> now it performs that melee attack. Hmm, okay, cool. Interesting. Um, shape elements. We definitely Let's see what this one can give us. Frostbolt. So chilled is a great one. It reduces the melee range, magic damage, dealt, and movement by one. So that's cool. And flame. Um, if we can put her in a position to, if I can put her here, then I can use uh, fire flame, but it's our flame, flame fan. Hmm. Let's use that. I'll move here, and then we can. Well, let's hold on to that. Let me think about. That. Oh, this is a good one for her right now. We want to be doing some... We want to be doing some uh, attacks without thinking about the defense. Uh, That's not bad. Power shot five again, swipe. So I wanted to use fire flame. Let's drop this. Oh, no, no. Let's drop this. Now let's use fire flame. So the hexes can be a bit tricky to, to understand. I've played a lot of Gloomhaven, so I um, wasn't as tricky. But basically, as you can see on the card, it shows as I was discussing before, it shows where you're standing and where the targets are. Um, I know for a fact that if I was to do this, then my two allies would be burned. So let's do this. The burning is going to, uh, they suffer two damage at the end of the turn, at the end of, at the end of their turn, yeah. Or whenever they suffer magic damage. So uh, that's a pretty nice fact here. So let's let's use this. And we know now that this one's going to die unless it gains a whole bunch of. Uh, um, well, it already did the uh, shield defense. There we go. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna be losing some of that now. Just that one power, okay. Spark. Huh. 
Yeah, so unfortunately the burn removes just the, the fence. It doesn't it doesn't um, skip the defense, so it's good to know though. I could try to I put her here and then go this direction with um, where is it? With unstable blast, that's three three damage on all of them. That might not be a bad idea. Problem is getting her there. So I think I'm going to go for it. That way we can really force our way through this. Let's take that. Is there a reason why I can't? Oh, because I don't have two. Take a step forward. Got five. And remove some of these powers. Meditation. Gain two at the start of your turn. Yeah, we want to get rid of that. We need four more damage. Though. Okay. One. Let's drop that. And then let's hit this one and that'll be killed. We remove that prepare. That's good. And improvise the attack. Much more, we need two more. We want to get rid of that so that it's uh, weak. There we go. So that's gone now. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of push and pull in, in this game as well. That's pretty nice. Um. Exhausted. So there we go. We're starting to pull some of these exhausted. Uh, oh, take two damage. Then all friendly heroes draw a card. So I would take actual two damage. That would lose defensive stance. Um, actually, I think we'll be able to just kill them outright with... Yeah, with uh, oh, so close. There we go. Bam. All right, victory. So this is our first phase of the of the quest. Uh, we have three level ups. I think what I'm going to do here is cut it and leave a bit on of a cliffhanger here. Um, we'll pick up this gear. I'll take a look at what this um, orangey red kind of uh, item is. It says question mark. So let's take a look at that next time. And yeah, we'll pick it up from here for the next episode. This is typically how I'll break it down though, is the first episode will be for the first uh, section. There's going to be three phases of the quest. So each phase is going to be its own video depending uh, I think each phase is going to take about 45 50 minutes or so um, cool well anyway this is uh, this is where we'll leave it we'll pick it up from here next time so thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you next time <laughs>